You're very welcome back. Now, musical fans will be glad to know that the world of theatre is slowly returning back to normal, including the iconic Andrew Lloyd Webber musical Phantom of the Opera, which has returned to London's West End. Yes, indeed. And joining us now to tell us about the momentous return to stage is the show's leading man, the Phantom himself, our very own Killian Donnelly. Good morning, Killian. How are you, pal? Good morning. How are you? Ah, uh, listen, we're great. It's good to see you. And look, genuinely thank you for coming on and do this because I know myself yeah. Saturday is you have a double show day today today's uh, you're you're going into a tricky day so thanks for joining us buddy we appreciate it not at all thanks for having me listen can we start with that uh, before we get to this iconic role and you know what it's like to reopen London's West End with this particular show can we go back to the start of your journey in terms of how you've ended up here because your CV is phenomenal in terms of musical theatre. You are musical theatre royalty now. But go back to where it started for you because you were surrounded by music and amateur dramatics as you were growing up. That's where your interest came from, was it? Yeah, that was my training. That was my training. It was always that thing. I I wasn't really interested in sports at school. I could couldn't even hold a hurley, let alone kick a football. But <laughs> I found the local musical society in uh, my hometown in Navan, St Mary's Musical Society, and it was that was my gang, that was my that was my group, that was my team, and I just fell in love with musicals and an Oklahoma to a Mac and Mabel to a Jesus Christ Superstar to a Joseph. I just really got on board with it and loved every second of it. But that was my training, and that built up my confidence. I was about fifteen. And it just it just went from there, really. And then, you know yourself through the Amdram. I got to meet yourself. You directed me in a hot Mikado. and it was it was that thing of you just went from show to show. People said, "Oh, they're doing a fiddler on the roof yeah. uh, in in here. They're doing a Mac and Mabel in here." And still to this day, at stage door, I will get people going, "Well, Killian," and they've got the the baseball cap with like. Mac and Mabel, ninety six, <laughs> written on the written on the baseball cap. Yeah, sweatshirt on, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You've so you properly I, I found your tribe, Killian. Would that be fair to say? Uh, what kind of oh. memories do you have of, of Simon in St Mary's Musical Society? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Easy now. I just, now, Killian, work away. We sit back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just remember. I just remember in Hot Mikado, it was so we had a lot of laughs, a lot yeah. of laughs. But whenever there was. Uh, a problem or a moment or <laughs> like I remember our 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 pooba or our pishtush whoever it was their microphone was left on and they went to the toilet oh, no. and I remember all over in the middle of a scene you could just hear it and I just remember your face Simon you were side stage and it was it was, <laughs> it was you had the keys because you would you would just swung in to just keep an eye and you had the keys well the face dropped on you and I just went I turned to you and you went I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> he still says yeah, that regularly. The joys of, yeah, the joys of <laughs> But listen, when when did it become a realization for you, Killian, that you could actually possibly make a living out of it? Because just to explain to people, you know, if you're from Ireland and you want to make a career in musical theatre, you have one option. You you get on a plane, you go to London or you go to America. You know, to say that it's not easy to dig a career out of it is, is an understatement. But when did you think you know what, I could, I could make a living off it. And what decision made you go? Uh, people like yourself, people like a Christine Scarry, a Brian Flynn, all these directors on the Amdram background, a David Hayes, who turned to me and said, give it a go, because I had to be the first mm. one to say it. I said, I'd love to do it professionally. And then they said, and I'd love to try it in London. And they said, well, try it. What's mm. the worst that can happen? We're 45 minutes away, get back on the plane, come home, just try it. So when I was 23, I said, right, I'm going to try it. And I had my savings and I moved over to London and I rented a small little apartment. And three months later, I got an audition for Les Mis. Mm. And the rest is history, as they say, because I got into that show. And then that was my like professional training. And what Les Mis loved about me was that I hadn't been trained. Mm. I hadn't, I had this fresh, as they said, I had this fresh uh, excitement about me where what, what do you want me to do? Which is what we do in the Amdram. It's yeah. like, oh, I can't get that chair off. Killian, will you swing over, pick up the Artful Dodger, pick up Oliver under the other arm, I grab know. the chair and yeah. do a, a box step of consider yourself an exit. And that's what Les Mis was. It was sort of grafting. You sort of had to be in Tenardier's. Yeah, but when you say things. you got into Les Mis, Killian, just to explain to people, you got into the ensemble. 
Uh, and then you, got, your, yeah, your promoter offered, up to swing cast, which means you have to learn every single character in the show. You have to yeah. know their path in case one of them is sick or ill, you jump into that. But then you go from Les Mis, you do another couple... Like, just to jump through your CV, like, you end up doing uh, the, the commitments in London, you end up doing Kinky Boots, you go to Broadway with Kinky Boots, you've been nominated yeah. twice for an Olivier Award, you've done Les Mis, you've played Jean Valjean, which is the Colin Wilkinson part, mm -hmm. you played it in, here at home in Dublin. And now you're playing probably one of the most iconic roles in West End musical history, and you've just reopened the West End after a pandemic. I mean, can, yeah. can you believe that? No, and it's so emotional. And that first night back at Phantom, like my oh. dad gave me a CD of Colin Wilkinson when I was 11 years old. <laughs> and it was, it was like Colin Wilkinson sings the, sings the hits, because I used to slag my dad that he didn't know singers. And he went, here's a singer. <laughs> and I remember hearing him sing Music of the Night, sing Bring Him Home. And it is, it is iconic to be in the mask. And I, I'm going into the show now. I have to be in the, the makeup chair at half 12. And it takes two hours to put the makeup on. But as it's happening, it's a process of, how did I get here? This is, yeah. this is unbelievable. Phantom of the Opera was always after the Amdram shows. You'd go back to a house and you'd have a few drinks and there'd be someone on the piano and they'd play Phantom. That's right. I think we all have the Andrew Lloyd Webber book of songs yeah. uh, somewhere around a piano. And it's, it's, yeah, it is quite surreal to be playing the role, to be playing the man. And that first night that we were back, I remember taking my bow and I just wept because it was a full house. Yeah. It was a full theatre. And they, the, the, you could feel the emotion because the people who had been sat in the auditorium were overwhelmed because they hadn't been in the theatre for 18 months. They're so and I felt delighted it was to be back there, for aren't they, Killian? We're looking at footage yeah, of yeah, opening yeah. night here, Killian. You're saying you were emotional. I've no doubt you were. I mean, you know, creative people like you want to be back doing what you're brilliant at doing. What kind of a reaction have you seen from the audience? Oh, it's, it's, it's quite overwhelming. It's, they were always really appreciative of a phantom or a lame is or a kinky boots but there's something more now it's it's more it's far more special right now because it's an escape for so many people they didn't have that mm. they didn't have that outlet mm. and they could that you could being told to sit at home and just watch your telly was incredible but some people needed to get out and experience live theater and that's what we're finding a lot we are finding some people like being incredibly grateful and saying thank you at a stage door, which hasn't really yeah. happened before. Um, I, think, I think a lot of people have missed it, especially that first, that first show back. Yeah. As soon as the lights went down, the roof was lifted off the place. And that's something I've never experienced in the West End. It, was, it, was, yeah, it was an incredible atmosphere. You've also taken on the greatest role that you'll ever play in your life. You've taken on the role of a daddy, because you, you had <laughs> yeah. a little baby boy. Yeah. The lovely time. There were no rehearsals for that. No, no, no. There ain't no musical score to rehearse to that, is there? <laughs> How is a family life? Because I know they're over there in London with you, which is hugely important. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's amazing. And to all you guys at Ireland AM, thank you so much. You've been so supportive. He was a day old and he was on Ireland AM. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't I been haven't that. Um, <laughs> he's wonderful. He's at that, he's 15 months and he's at that toddler stage where you're able to put him down whilst you cook the breakfast. But when you turn around, he's on the back of the couch. Yeah, he's in a different so room. The breakfast yeah, gets yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. It is so, joyful. Yeah, was... And as I say, Killian, it's the best role you'll ever play. And you were born to play that part particularly well. Listen, we are hugely proud of you, my friend. Keep flying the flag, keep doing what you're doing. And hopefully we'll see you in person really soon. Thank you, Killian. Thank you so much, guys. Lots of love. And good luck today. Day. Take care. Break a leg. Thank you. Thanks right. a lot. Up next, how to help your dog adjust to life after lockdown. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>